Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Professor Ramanjit Kaur Johal from the Department of Public Administration, Punjab University, Chandigarh. Today we are going to discuss administrative reforms in India since independence and the recommendations of various committees and commissions set up for administrative reforms. You will understand that administrative reforms is not the same as administrative change. Administrative reforms is not only to bring about changes and improvements in work processes and procedures, but also to make administration responsive to the needs of the society and to the commitment and political goals of the government in power. Indian Administration, Administrative Reforms in India Since Independence, Committees and Commissions on Administrative Reform. After reading this module, you will understand the meaning of administrative reforms, the history of post-independence administrative reforms in India, and the recommendations of various committees and commissions on administrative reforms in India. Administrative reform is one of the major concerns of governments all over the world. Administration is constantly involved in practical action situations and thus cannot afford to remain static. Consequently, administrative reforms are an imperative globally. These reforms have an ideological and cultural basis. For launching reforms, a blueprint is needed as nations need to know where they wish to go and which path they want to take to achieve that goal. In India, because of colonial legacy, the administration inherited the role and functions to deal only with the revenue collection and maintenance of law and order functions. But post-independence, India shifted from a police state to a welfare state. The primary objective of welfare state is towards the social and economic development of the country. And to achieve this goal, various measures have been taken by the Indian government, many based on the recommendations of various committees and commissions set up for the purpose. In the words of Gerald Caden, administrative reform is the artificial inducement of administrative transformation against resistance. It is artificial because it is not natural, accidental or automatic, but deliberate and planned. It is induced as it involves persuasion, argument and the ultimate threat of sanctions. It is an irreversible process and has moral connotations being undertaken in the belief that the end results will always be better than the status quo and so worth the effort to overcome resistance. Administrative reforms are needed to meet the challenges of change in technology, infrastructure, methods of work and attitudes of succeeding generations to work for the objectives of the organization and in the social context in which the organization operates. To deal with continuous systematic transformation and adapt to new environment and conditions are the distinguishing characteristics of a modernized social system. Therefore, with a change in environment, society has to change itself and must adopt an innovative culture, new knowledge and technology and crave for a new order through elimination of the old structures and systems. Administrative reform is considered a part of the universality of this change needed for ensuring the highest standards of efficiency and integrity in the public service, making public administration a fit instrument for carrying out the social and economic policies of the government, considering the machinery of the government and its procedures of work, the machinery for planning at all levels, Maintaining the thin line of demarcation between political neutrality of administration and party politics, curbing corruption and improving the efficiency of administration internally and in relation to service delivery to the citizens. There are few tools of administrative improvement, among which O&M, Organization and Methods, is the most prominent one. O&M includes the study of the entire process of management, one of the important tasks of ONM work is to conduct reviews of an organization with a view to streamlining it. It examines the structure of the organization under review and studies the administrative and clerical procedures and methods, mechanization and equipment, office layout and working conditions. Work study is an important tool related to ONM. It is the application of detailed analysis of work to achieve higher output. It aims at discovering through systematic methods and a scientific approach, simpler, easier and more effective and economical ways of doing things. 
some of the important techniques for improving work methods and simplifying procedures and methods are work distribution analysis, work content analysis, motion analysis, and layout analysis. Various thinkers have categorized reforms in administration in various ways. According to Gerald Caden, these can be of four types. One, reforms imposed through political changes. Two, those introduced to remedy organizational rigidity. Three, reforms through the legal system. And four, reforms through changes in attitude. India has seen many transitions in respect of administrative form in its long history. In the British period, the modern bureaucratic form of government was in existence. Various committees and acts were formed and implemented during this period, which brought various reforms in the administration of the country. These were the Pitts India Act of 1784, the Charter Acts of 1833 and 1853, the Government of India Act of 1858, the Indian Council Act of 1861, 1892 and 1909, the Government of India Acts of 1919 and 35 the Indian Independence Act of 1947, the Lee Commission and the Simon Commission. In 1947, when India became independent, it faced various problems such as migration, refugees, retirement of a great number of administrative personnel, problem of integration of the princely states and so on. The ideology of a socialistic, secular, democratic pattern of society was adopted with socio-economic development as the core. This led to a greater proliferation of tasks and functions of the administration. To take up the welfare programs and challenges, the current administrative machinery needed to be revamped and reinforced as it was still using the colonial regime's procedures and was rendered weak by erosive circumstances and stressful situations that had arisen after independence. A number of committees and commissions were set up on administrative reforms post-independence and we will discuss these one by one. The Secretariat Reorganization Committee. This was set up under the chairpersonship of Sri Girija Shankar Vajpayee in 1947 by the Government of India. Personnel shortages, better utilization of the available manpower and improvements of methods of work in the Central Secretariat were the matters inquired by the committee. Measures for reorganizing the Secretariat departments and procedural changes in the Secretariat was recommended by this committee. The report of the first pay commission was also received by the central government in 1947, which was set up under the chairmanship of Sri Srinivas Vardhacharir. The Economy Committee was set up in 1948 by the central government to review the increase in the civil expenditure of the central government and to make recommendations for the promotion of true economy in the administration by the elimination of unnecessary, wasteful or extravagant expenditure. This was set up under the chairmanship of Kasturbhai Lalbhai, a well-known industrialist. On the basis of its recommendations, economy committees were set up in various ministries to check the government expenditure, including that incurred on staff. The Sri N. Gopalaswamy Ayangar report was submitted by a committee set up under him for a comprehensive review of the working of the government machinery. His report on reorganization of the machinery of central government in 1949 recommended regrouping of ministries, improving the competence of personnel and creation of an organization and methods division in the government. The major recommendation of this report was on the grouping of ministries into four bureaus. The Bureau of Natural Resources and Agriculture, the Bureau of Industry and Commerce, Bureau of Transport and Communications, and the Bureau of Labor and Social Services. In July 1951, a committee headed by a retired ICS officer, Shri A.D. Gorwala, in its report on public administration in India and another on the efficient conduct of state enterprises, underlined the need for having a clean, efficient and impartial administration. Introducing organization and methods procedure in various government organizations was recommended by Gorwala. He stressed on efficiency and discipline in the civil service and understanding between the politicians and administrators. According to him, the ministry should not interfere in the working of the heads of departments. Whitley councils should be created, recruitment methods should be reformed and the IES training should be made more systematic were his other recommendations. 
In 1952, the report on the machinery of government improvement of efficiency was submitted by Sri R. A. Gopalaswamy. He also recommended the creation of an organization and methods directorate on the lines of the Gopalaswamy Iyengar report. In 1953, the government of India invited Mr. Paul H. Appleby, a Ford Foundation consultant, to study the Indian administrative system and give his recommendation and expert opinion. He submitted two reports: one on public administration in India, the report of survey in 1953, and the second, the re-examination of India's administrative system with special reference to administration of government, industrial, and commercial enterprises in 1956. He made several recommendations for improving work procedures and for enhancing the capabilities of the administrative organization. Among them, two well-known recommendations got implemented within a year of the submission of the first report. First, the establishment of a professional training institute, namely the Indian Institute of Public Administration for promoting research in public administration, was set up in New Delhi in 1954. Second, setting up of central office to provide leadership in respect of organization management and procedure. As a result, organization and methods division was set up in 1954 in the cabinet secretariat for improving the speed and quality of government business and streamlining its procedures. Appleby's second report also made several proposals for streamlining administration, recruitment and training and the relationship of administration with parliament. He advocated the need for delegation of power and greater coordination amongst the ministries. The Committee on Plan Projects was constituted by the Planning Commission in 1956 with a view to evolving organization norms, work methods, standards and techniques for achieving economy and efficiency in the implementation of planned projects. A Management and Development Administration Division was also established as a part of this committee for promoting the use of modern tools of management. The Santanam Committee on Prevention of Corruption was set up under the chairmanship of K Santanam in 1964 to study the causes of corruption, to review the existing setup for checking corruption and to suggest measures for improvement. This committee's report set out to lay down a procedure for dealing with specific allegations against central and state ministers, a code of conduct for central and state ministers, a code of conduct for mps and mlas and a code of conduct for political parties the committee recommended that the president might constitute on the advice of the prime minister a national panel out of which a committee of 3 persons may be constituted to inquire into the allegations against a minister it also recommended that the code of conduct for ministers should include the same provisions as for public servants in respect of acquisition of property acceptance of gifts and disclosure of assets and liabilities the committee also recommended the setting up of the central vigilance commission and adoption of a code of conduct for civil servants In January 1966, the first Administrative Reforms Commission was set up under the chairmanship of Sri Morarji Desai. He was succeeded by Sri K Hanuman Thayya in 1967. The entire gamut of public administration was covered by the ARC at the center as well as in the states. The commission submitted 20 reports containing 581 recommendations leading to major and minor changes in administration. It had set up 20 study teams, 13 working groups and one task force and submitted reports on the following subject: problems of redress of citizens grievances, machinery of planning, public undertakings, finance, accounts and audit, economic administration, machinery of government of India and its procedures of work, life insurance corporation, machinery for planning, final report, central direct tax administration, administration of union territories and northeastern frontier administration. personal administration delegation of financial and administrative powers center state relations state administration the small scale sector railways treasuries reserve bank of india post and telegraph and scientific departments these report had a thrust of reforms on organization and functioning of ministries and departments and also on reform in the civil services 
three study teams, namely the Thorat Committee, the Nagarkati Committee and the Patil Committee assisted ARC with regard to personnel management. As a result, the Department of Personnel was created in August 1970 and placed in the Cabinet Secretariat. This was an important recommendation of the Commission that was implemented. Some other major recommendations of the ARC are, it spelled out the task for the Department of Administrative Reforms, suggesting that it should concentrate on undertaking studies on administrative reforms that are of a foundational nature, creating ONM expertise in the ministries and departments and providing training to the staff in their ONM units in modern managerial technique, and providing guidance to the ONM units in implementing the improvements and reforms. Reactivating of the ONM units in different ministries and departments, setting up of a special cell in the Central Reforms Agency to give effect to the reports of ARC. The Central Reforms Agency should be research based in matters dealing with the methods of work, staffing pattern and organizational structure, etc. It recommended the creation of a full-fledged Department of Personnel in the central government, a unified pay grading structure, appointment of Lokpal at the centre and Lokayuks at the centre and state levels, performance budgeting, introduction of specialists into middle and senior management positions, setting up sector corporations and special audit boards for public undertaking. In 1976, a Committee on Recruitment Policy and Selection Methods, headed by Sri D.S. Kothari, was set up by the UPSC to examine and report on the system of recruitment to All India Services and Central Group A and B Services. The committee recommended for a single examination for the All India Services and Central Group A non-technical services. This was to be conducted in two stages. First, a qualifying preliminary examination. Second, the main examination incorporating the written and interview tests. Another landmark commission was the National Police Commission, set up under the chairmanship of Sri Dharamvira in 1977 to examine the role and functions of police with special reference to control of crime and maintenance of public order, the method of magisterial supervision, the system of investigation and prosecution and maintenance of crime records. It submitted eight reports between 1979 and 1981. The most important recommendations of the NPC centered on the problem of insulating the police from illegitimate political and bureaucratic interference. The Commission also recommended the modernization of the law enforcement machinery and the institutional arrangements for preventing misuse of power. It made over 500 recommendations, extending over a wide range of areas including role and function of the police, control of crime and maintenance of public order, political interference in police work, magisterial supervision, complaint against the police, investigation, prosecution and maintenance of crime records. The Janta government appointed a committee on Panchayati Raj institutions under the chairmanship of Sri Ashok Mehta in December 1977. Its report in 1978 recommended to revive and strengthen the declining Panchayati Raj system in the country. Zilla Parishad at the district level and below it the Mandal Panchayat consisting of a group of villages covering a population of 15,000 to 20,000. A district should be the first point for decentralization under popular supervision below the state level. Zilla Parishad should be the executive body and made responsible for planning at the district level. The Panchayati Raj institutions should have compulsory powers of taxation to mobilize their own financial resources. Development functions should be transferred to the Zilla Parishad and all development staff should work under its control and supervision. There should be a regular social audit by a district level agency and by a committee of legislators to check whether the funds allotted for the vulnerable social and economic groups are actually spent on them. The state government should not supersede the Panchayati Raj institutions and in case of an imperative supersession, election should be held within six months from the date of supersession. The Nyai Panchayats, the committee said, should be kept as separate bodies from that of development panchayat and should be presided over by a qualified judge. In 1981, the Economic Reforms Commission was set up under the chairpersonship of Sri L.K. Jha. Its main functions were a study of the important area of economic administration with a view to suggesting various reforms to streamline the functioning of the system. 
examination of the rent control act of various states and preparation of the model rent control law were also included in its terms of reference the commission submitted a number of reports to the government of india which advocated the rationalization and modernization of the system of economic administration and paved the way for a new economic order In 1984 the Commission on Center State Relations was set up and headed by Justice R S Sarkaria to examine and review the working of the existing arrangements between the union and states with regards to powers functions and responsibilities in all spheres Its final report contained 247 specific recommendations in 19 chapters and 179 of these were implemented by the government Some of the key recommendations are it strongly suggested that article 370 was not a transitory provision this appears to have been made specifically in response to one all india political party that demanded the deletion of article 370 in the interests of national integration It recommended that the residuary powers of legislation in regard to taxation matters should remain exclusively in the competence of parliament while the residuary field other than that of taxation should be placed on the concurrent list. Also recommended that the enforcement of union laws particularly those relating to the concurrent sphere is secured through the machinery of the states. It talked about ensuring uniformity on the basic issues of national policy with respect to the subjects of a proposed legislation. Consultations may be carried out with the state governments individually and collectively at the forum of the proposed intergovernmental council. However, this consultation was not recommended as a constitutional obligation. It said that ordinarily the union should occupy only that field of a concurrent subject on which uniformity of policy and action is essential in the larger interest of the nation leaving the rest for state action. On administrative relations Sarkaria made the following observation federalism is more a functional arrangement for cooperative action than a static institutional concept article 258 power of the union to confer powers etc on states in certain cases provides a tool by the liberal use of which cooperative federalism can be substantially realized in the working of the system a more generous use of this tool should be made than has hitherto been done On article 356 it recommended very sparing use only in extreme cases as a last resort. The commission's recommendation for the creation of an interstate council was implemented in 1990. The Satish Chandra Committee was set up to review and evaluate the recruitment procedure in higher civil services in 1989. On the basis of this committee's recommendations, an essay paper of 200 marks was introduced in the civil service main examination and the marks for interview were increased from 250 to 300. The Department of Administrative Reforms and Public Grievances organized a conference of chief secretaries of the states and union territories on 20th November 1996. The conference focused mainly on having an accountable, open and citizen-friendly government and on improving the performance and integrity of the public services. The follow-up actions of the conference included setting up of an inter-ministerial working group on right to information and transparency, constituting an expert group headed by Sri N Vittal to look into the computerization in personal system and public services, formulation of citizens charters by all ministries with public interface, steps to provide timely disposal of departmental inquiries and vigilance proceedings developing grievance redressal machinery and initiating civil service reforms especially including the transfers and promotions in the center and states in 1997 A conference of chief ministers was held in the wake of the chief secretaries conference to achieve the objectives of accountability, transparency and responsiveness spelled out by the conference of chief secretaries. This conference had generated a national dialogue on the above mentioned issues to elicit opinion of the wider public. The outcome of the debate came out as an action plan for effective and responsive government which was adopted in the conference of chief ministers on 24th May 97. The action plan had three components namely making government accountable and citizen friendly transparency and right to information and improving the performance and integrity of the public services. 
The second Administrative Reforms Commission was constituted by the Government of India Ministry of Personnel in 2005 under the chairmanship of Sri Virappa Moyli. Its objective was to prepare a plan of action for a complete makeover of the Indian administrative system. It submitted 16 reports and made hundreds of recommendations. Few of the important global lessons it drew are that the political leadership at the apex level with consensus across party lines pushed the reform agenda with commitment, focusing on the core functions of government, right-sizing the administration and outsourcing the functions was emphasized. Competition in delivery of public service and dismantling of monopolies was also emphasized. Identification of government departments to carry out specific executive functions within a mandate and a framework of policy and resources, decentralization, delegation and devolution, public-private partnership, bureaucratic deregulation, strengthening of accountability mechanisms, e-governance for efficiency and citizen empowerment, a performance management system for refurbishing personal administration, having citizens' charters, effective grievance redressal mechanisms, the right to information, promotion of diffusion of good governance practices, policy evaluation and regulatory impact assessment, benchmarking for continuous improvement, and having governance indices indicating situation of different social groups in terms of quality of life, especially the disadvantaged and vulnerable. So students, we are now going to summarize our discussion on administrative reforms. Firstly, it is clear to us that administrative reforms is a universal concept and not peculiar only to the Indian administration or the Indian administrative system. Secondly, that administrative reforms has many components and focus also is on various things like the need for the reforms can stem from the need to deliver goods better to the citizens. This is what happened in the Indian administrative system post-independence when the administrative system had to gear up for welfare and development as opposed to a law and order and revenue system. We have seen that many committees and commissions were set up and gave very useful recommendations for administrative reforms in India. However, a lot of recommendations need to still be implemented to deliver the goods to the citizens. Thank you.